So this is a globally recognized important bird area, so it's um, very important for migratory species. For instance, right now we have Cassian terns out there making some noise. We've got Dunlin, different kinds of sandpipers like the Dunlin. Um, different owls use this site, like short-eared owls. Um, Northern Harriers are fairly common. All kinds of shorebirds come through here. And it's uh, remarkably the Fraser River estuary at this site is one of the most important sites in the Western Hemisphere. Um, the Fraser River estuary is the more, most important site for birds in Western Canada. So what happens when you come to a place time and time again through the seasons or over years is that you are allowed to get into a state of deep contemplation and um, the plants and animals there can kind of speak, start to speak to you or the landscape can start to speak to you over time and it's kind of an effortless way to know something really deeply. Um, it's really wonderful to come to a place and see um, the same cycles repeat again and again. Or you might start to see them stopping um, and have to think that through. For instance, many of the lichens here died this year, and that's a really interesting thing to see something significant disappear. Or many of the birds that were here last year are not here this year and then I have to learn and think about why they're not here. Um, that might just be a cyclical pattern or it might also just be because we know that a lot of the species that come here are in trouble. my favorite spot at Brunswick Point. We're right next to the Delta Port, but we're in a really important little sand flat and mud, a very big mud flat um, and a uh, tidal marsh, a salt marsh. And um, there's going to be some really lovely chatter here from some Caspian terns in the neighborhood. There's a whole bunch of them here because it's high tide and they're kind of chasing the gulls around. So I've got everything laid out here watercolors uh, paper, the watercolors themselves. We've got um, warm and cool of each color and some earth tones to play with. The white, I would just leave, use the white of the paper instead. I've got my sketchbook here, um, my notebook for taking notes, pens, pencils, water, and I like to use just um, whatever I can find in the recycling bin for mixing paints and for um, for holding extra water. And so now we'll get started. I want to demonstrate two or three ways that you can easily capture the shape of a plant and get to know it without really knowing how to draw or having any experience making art. So let's get started. I'm just recording this grass in my notebook and what I've done is I the sun even the sun is not really that bright right now but it's it's making a shadow of the grass and then I can trace the shadow and by tracing it get the shape of the, the plant. So I'm, I'm playing with its silhouette.
there we are. And now I can look at it and see, okay, do I want to add any details? There we go. We have the shape of the grass and make notes about where I found it, etc. Now let's try that in the watercolor paper. So I want to make this easy for myself. I don't want to make it too complicated. And I'm not going to continue with the rest of the plant because I want to make it a little more simple. But I do have actually this beautiful shape there. And I've only traced that part. Now let's see what we can do with watercolor if we want. So let's just start by seeing what you can do with the primary colors of blue, red, and yellow. And you can choose if you want these to be cool or warm, um, blue, red, and yellow. So I'm choosing the, a variety here. This is a cool yellow. This is a warm red and that's a warm, or that's a cool blue. So um, one of the really fun things about this watercolor paper is it's super thick and it's made to take water. So what I want you to do is get your brush wet and just see what you can do with just water. So try painting around your plant now we're not going to do the standard kind of botanical illustration where we paint the plant. We're going to paint around it. So I just want you to take just water and move around the plant shape, that silhouette. And this might produce some really fun stuff. So I'm just getting started here and I'll show you what this will do. The paper's getting wet with pure clean water. Now I can take a little bit of that color and just drop it in the water and see what it does. See if I can get it to spread. like this and see what kind of magic happens on the paper. I can use my brush to move it around if I want. And I can also add some other colors. So I want to clean my brush really well before I touch the other color. And now just see what happens when you start to combine those colors. This will give you a chance to play with color while you're still maintaining the integrity and the shape of that plant. And if you really want to, you could start to think about how those colors express something of the plant or of that 
site that you're at or of that moment in time. If I want, I can try mixing them on the paper. And this is really wonderful paper and it gives you the opportunity to just really play with color and uh, to play with water and see what happens on the page. you see that I'm in a kind of a dry area of the of the paper you can try working with both wet and dry um, paper wow I really like this oh, beautiful 